Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about The Last of Us Season 1 Episode 7, Left Behind. So this was another good episode. It is basically a flashback of that of Ellie and her time in like, you know, the DMZ and, or the QNZ, whatever it's called, the, um, the Corazine, um, zone and everything. And it explores her friendship and relationship with that of Raleigh, a person not from technically the game, but from, I think it's called the DLC, I believe, which is like an origin story and stuff like that. And this was really cool. Bella, um, I'm about to say Bella Thorne. There's too many Bellas, man. <laughs> Bella Ramsey acted her butt off in this episode, which I knew she would because she's a very good actress and everything. I know there were some people who was doubting her ability when she doesn't look like the video game character, but come on now. Not everybody's going to look like the video game character. And so, like, but a lot of people was doubting her ability to act because of that. But it's kind of like if you've seen her acting other stuff in the past, then you know she can act. And I've only seen her act in, like, one and a half things. And now one major thing was just like a kid witch show and everything. And she wowed me and everything. So I knew this is like, this is one of the main reasons why I watched this show. But so I could see her in it. Because in that witch show, she left in the last season. And I'm like, oh man, that sucks. Like, you know, the show couldn't finish it out the way that, you know, I wanted to with that character. So they had to recast. And so like, because then she had quit acting because of that. And so I'm like, oh no, I'm not going to get to see her in anything no more. But then she showed up in his Dark Material season two, but only as a small teeny tiny role. So I'm like, oh man. <laughs> now she's been in other stuff since then, but I never watched that stuff. And so when I heard she's going to be one of the leads in this, I'm like, cool, I have to watch and everything. Now there is an actual zombie. And still, to my frustration, I wish this was a zombie apocalypse. Because this is what also sold me on the show. Um, the fact that I thought zombies and zombie monsters was going to be in here. Now, I've heard two different things on Twitter. Some people say there are tons of zombies in the video game and other people say there are not. So I don't know which to believe and I don't want to go to Wikipedia uh, or watch um, to find out because I don't want to spoil myself and I don't want to watch a cutscene of the video game because I don't want to spoil myself just yet. I'll do that. Um, like once the show is like, you know, rap, what well, well, is done showing out the first season, which is only two more episodes and stuff. But for me, it is a bummer because I want to see zombie action. Like I said before, this is a very good post-apocalyptic show. But it's just a post-apocalyptic show. There really isn't no zombies to consider it to be a zombie, a post-apocalyptic zombie show. And that has divided people online. Like I read one dude's comment and he's all like 38 minutes and nothing has happened yet. And so what he's basically saying is that, you know, no zombie action has happened yet and stuff because it's just like two people hanging out and talking and, and having more of a personal interconnected like story. And it's funny because <laughs> HBO Max replied, I assume HBO Max was going to be like a smart mouth, but instead they're all like, oh, if you're having difficulties with your app, let us know. We can help you fix it. So basically, it, it, this is what I've been saying about like people who run these social media accounts for companies and stuff. They don't really read the comments. They just assume you're having a problem with the app and they want to help you fix it. Something like that happened to me with another company um, a while back. Um, and so, like, I'm just thinking to myself, did you not read what I said? <laughs> I literally told that person that and stuff. And then this caused a huge debate in his comment section when he talking about 38 minutes um, and nothing has happened. So you have some people saying that I want to see zombies. And then you have one smart mouth person who's all like, if you want to see zombies, play the video game. And then another person said, well, there are no zombies in the video game. And so... 
it has caused people to bicker like online because of this because people like myself they want to see more than just a personal interconnected story they want to see zombies because it's what we were sold on and stuff it's just like the walking dead when the walking dead started having less zombies less people afraid of zombies and more drama type stuff people got bored and turned off and so that's my one well that's one of my two downsides of this show i want to see zombie action because I feel like there are no stakes in this show. And then whenever something bad does happen, I'm just kind of like, okay, whatever. And the reason why I say, okay, whatever is because it's my second downfall of this show. Every time we get a very interesting character, boom, they die. And so it's just like, what's the point in liking this character when either they're going to die or they're just not going to stick around for the rest of the show. And it's only going to be for this one episode. And so I get this is somewhat how the video game is because this, from what a lot of people are saying, is a true adaption of a video game and it makes them happy. However, it's like I've said before, you're never going to please everybody when it comes to adapting something either. You're going to have the type of people who want to adapt it perfectly like the source material. So where there's nothing new and then you're going to have those other people who want to take elements from the source material but then make their own thing so you're never gonna please the same type of people because it's kind of like if this is truly a faithful adaption then like what's new that's gonna surprise you you know what i'm saying and so like but there has been tweaks made to the um source material and their thing like in episode three so it does give you that like you know they are bringing something new to the table um to a certain degree like one of the reasons why i had such a huge problem with the live action cgi lion king movie but well, technically it's not really live action it's all cgi but still it looks like live action is because it was exactly like the original movie but it didn't have the heart and feel and expression of the original cartoon movie and that's because they all had dull expressions on their faces to make it look like realism and so that really bummed me out and everything and what teeny tiny stuff they did change it just wasn't enough and it wasn't as interesting as the stuff they left out and so like for me I don't really care since I've never played the video game. I don't care if this is really like a faithful adaption or not because I mean, look at The Walking Dead. When they started the show out, it was not a faithful adaption. They changed a lot of stuff around. And I was totally cool with that because it was really good and I was rocking in and rolling. But then once they started bringing in more of the source material, it started to get kind of boring. And that's because it's two different genres. You have the comic book and then you have the live action stuff. What translate well in a comic doesn't always translate well in a live action adaption. Same thing with cartoons. You can't do everything that's in a cartoon because it's not going to translate well in live action. And the same could be said with like a video game and stuff. Like take the Walking Dead Telltale um, video game. Amazing video game but there are just some things that would not translate well from that into live action like a bunch of grown adults constantly asking um ooh, what's her name is it chloe i think asking the girl like you know a little teeny tiny girl no clementine asking clementine a little teeny tiny 18 year old girl hey what's your advice what should we do we need your help and everything we need you to go in there and kill all those zombies because we're too scared and it's all like you're our leader so it's like something like that would not translate very well in live action but all in all this is still a very good episode I finally get to see this mystery um, character of Raleigh and everything. And so basically, it starts off with Joel being hurt still, you know, and he's telling Ellie, just leave him, go back to Tommy and everything. Ellie does not want to do that. She's tired of losing people. And, you know, in this flashback, we see somebody that she really cared about that she lost. But technically, the first people she would have to lose would have to be her parents. Not sure what happened to her parents. 
but basically she's been raised in this quarantine zone and so like but she does not want to leave joel because she has really truly bonded with this man and you know develop a relationship and kind of like you know this mentory kind of like um guardian type of like father-daughter type relationship that they have and so like she gets mad and she leaves but then she stops and then we get the flashback and we see what it was like in the q zone and everything and basically i thought it was just gonna be a whole episode of that where people are picking on her and this and that and raleigh would defend her but apparently that happened all off screen and so she is getting picked on and i noticed when she was jogging with everybody else she was really 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 slow I'm all like, either she's supposed to run like that or Bella just can't run. <laughs> but no, it's just like that one girl was pissed. She's all like, you're slacking, gonna get us in trouble. I don't wanna run extra laps. So they get into a fist fight. And so Ellie has a shiner, but apparently the other girl had to get like a bunch of stitches. It would have been nice to see the other girl's face jacked up <laughs> and everything to show how really tough Ellie is and everything. And because how do we know she really got 40 something stitches, you know, maybe the captain just said that to make Ellie feel better or something. And so this is why I hate when they shy away from certain stuff in this show. And so like the captain's talking to her and everything. He's not going to put her in a box no more. And like, you know, he's all like, you can be like a leader and you can put that frustration to where it really need. And you can be like me and everything and get like a better job when you get older and this and that. So when she goes to bed, she has her book of puns, like volume one. She has her Walkman and everything. And because you gotta remember, this is in the year 20, no, 20 something, something, probably like 2020 or something. I don't know. Um, because like, you know, she's like 15 or something like that. So it's not much off from, I guess, um, that's about three months off, three months or say. I think she got bit and she said it's been like, she's been bit for three months and she hasn't like turned yet. So it's like three months ago from the first episode. And so like, all of a sudden, somebody breaks into her room and tries to, like, you know, put their hand on her mouth. Well, it turns out to be Raleigh, her friend. And so, like, she doesn't think it's funny, but, you know, Raleigh likes to joke around and everything. So, we find out that Raleigh has been gone and Ellie thought she was dead. But it turns out, um, Raleigh just, like, ran away and everything. She couldn't take it there no more. So... Raleigh wants to give her a night of fun and everything. So they sneak out and they're like running the rooftops, which is really cool. Kayari, it reminds me of Ninja Turtles from the 2003 cartoon series when they would run and jump on rooftops and be training and stuff like that. And there used to be a song that I'm talking about running on the rooftops. And that just reminded me of that. And so Raleigh wants to take, um, Ellie to the mall, but Ellie's like, yo, we can't go there. Like, you know, there's tons of affected in there. And she's all like, and so Raleigh, of course, doesn't believe it because she's been staying there. And so she's all like, you know, if it's, um, if it's infected, then where are they affected? Like, why aren't they roaming and stuff like that? So they go there and it's a giant mall. It looks so much different than my mall. It has like two floors and stuff my mall technically has two floors too but it's mainly just a one floor but one department store has two floors to it so that's when you get to do like the elevator thing and in that second floor is dedicated all to that one store and that one store only my mall is very boring it's nothing but a bunch of girl stores and there aren't that many guy stores and if it is it ain't the type of clothes that i buy and there is a video um like a dvd movie store there but you know how that's going the way of dinosaurs lately so it's just boring i never really go no more but ellie has never been in a mall and everything she's never seen an arcade store which my mall doesn't even have no more she's never even been on a um uh, escalator and everything and like I said before, Bella is acting her butt off. It's so believable 
that she's never seen all this stuff before. And not only that, but because she's 19, but she looks like she's 12, <laughs> she has this youthful appearance and she acts like she's a youth in everything. It's like she really acts like she's some goobery, like teenage girl and stuff. And this is what I'm saying. Like she acts her butt off and like she's an extremely great actress and stuff. And so like, and this is why I'm so glad she got cast in this role. But I can't believe the person who does the motion caption for Ellie and stuff. I've seen that actress in something. I can't remember. I think it was a show called Guidance or something. And so like, I would love to talk about Guidance, but it's been taken off um, Hulu. So I can't get my bearings on it no more. And so like, um, you know, Ellie tells her what she's been up to. Basically, when she was put in the box, she snuck out. And she realized that, you know, she's going to be 17 soon. And that's when they put you on work detail. And they were going to put her in the sewer system picking up crap. And she did not want that kind of lifestyle. I mean, heck, who would? You know what I'm saying? And so she bounced. And so this woman in her 40s saw her constantly sneaking around and thought she would be great to join that of the fireflies and so she's the freedom fighter and everything she does not like fedra and so like i think this woman's uh, name is marla it's the woman from the first episode who had ellie and everything and so now this makes sense, you know, when she's all like, well, was Riley a terrorist and everything? And so because, you know, in the Q zone, you're taught to believe that the fireflies are like terrorists and everything. And so, you know, Ellie's been wondering, why have you brought me here and all this other stuff? And of course, because, you know, she wants to have one awesome, like, time of fun. And so Ellie thinks it's because raleigh left and abandoned her and it upset her so she wants to like you know make it up and stuff like that she gives her gifts and all kind of cool stuff there are things straight from the video game like them going into like the photo booth and taking a bunch of photos but of course there isn't that much ink left so it comes out kind of grayish and so like they passed like a Victoria's Secret store <laughs> and everything, which is so funny because it's like lingerie and this thong looking thing. And they're all like, Ugh, who would ever wear something like that? But then Ellie just keeps like looking at it. And I don't think of myself was well, like, this can't be something Ellie would want to wear because this doesn't fit her personality. But then you find out that Ellie does indeed um has feelings for like girls she is a lesbian and so the show never made it clear because you know you find out much later on and stuff and so like and it's fun seeing them goof around and like play around because it's like who wouldn't want to be in an abandoned mall that's like the ultimate like thrill ride for a lot of people and but for me it would probably be like walmart or something like that like you could just find all kind of stuff in walmart and have a good time and so ellie isn't quite sure as to why some stores are empty and why some are comp um have other stuff in it and so you know raleigh tells her what her mom told her is that people took what they needed and left what they didn't which is just the most common sense thing there is you know but ellie doesn't realize that because ellie you know was born in a post-apocalyptic world and she doesn't know much about the old days but she knows about alcohol because when they find the dead man he has a bottle of alcohol with him and ellie sniffed it and can tell it's not moonshine so they drink it why why do so many tv shows do this for teenagers why do they always drink and why do they always clickety clack like, i don't get that when i was growing up i didn't do none of that stuff but of course they're more like rebels so i guess that's what you know the bad kids do and everything the, the edgy kids and stuff they drink and stuff like that and so like one of the gifts that raleigh has for ellie is the book of puns like volume two and so they start um reading off that and stuff but ellie can kind of suspect that something is going on there's more to what raleigh is saying <clears throat> now while they don't know this 
there is a zombie inside and he has a really cool display of fungus growing all around him and of course they can feel the vibrations and stuff like that that's going on and they can hear ellie and raleigh making lots of loud noises when they're playing mortal kombat 2 and everything and so like i think i played mortal kombat when i was a kid growing up and i watched that one youtube movie um that they had out with Jerry Ryan and some other people. Too bad that never got turned into like a show. And so like, but I've never seen the movies. I've seen part of the second movie, that's about it. And you know, they are loving this video game and they seem so believable. She's all like, well, how do I play? She's all like, you know, just hit the buttons, but there's too many buttons and everything. Which, you know, back in those days, boy, no more control controllers, boy, they had so many buttons. But, you know, when you're a kid, somehow you just navigate. You figured it out. I remember that's how I used to be with all those buttons. And then sometimes they have to tell you, okay, well, this button does this, this does that. And then somehow your mind remembers how to, like, you know, go from which button to another without even having to look. Boy, that's that mad skill when you're a video gamer and everything from back in the day. And so it's kind of like the computer, you know, or playing, like, a piano and stuff. Well, Ellie finally discovers what's really going on with Riley. She finds explosives and, like, you know, flash grenades and stuff like that. Riley was sent on a mission to take down the QZ zone and everything. And this really pisses off Ellie because she's all like, dude, I'm here and everything. She's all like, no, you would have never gotten hurt because I would have made sure. And Ellie has a right to be pissed and everything because Raleigh didn't come back for her. She came back for a mission because Raleigh literally has been living in the mall for like a week and stuff and never came to get like, you know, um, Ellie. But Ellie gets even more pissed off when she finds out she can't come with um, Raleigh. See, Raleigh is getting taken to a different state. That's why she's being relocated. She asked if um, Ellie could come with her, but her superior said no. So Ellie gets pissed and she storms off. And then all of a sudden, you start to hear Riley scream. I'm like, oh no. So there's like tension building. And so Ellie's like running back with her pocket knife and everything. But it turns out Riley is just pranking her again. And that pissed me off. I'm like, dude. There needs to be tension, there needs to be suspense, there need to be stakes in this show. Because we know there's a zombie roaming around and everything. So then they go to a Halloween store and they put on masks and they start like dancing. Now, you get hints of that Ellie is a lesbian because when they was on the carousel ride, which even my mall doesn't have things like that for little kids no more. But, um, and my mall keeps changing, man. It used to be like this laser lights, um, not laser light, but a laser shooting type thing in there. They took that out and they put some girly kid store in there. And I'm just like, man, my mall sucks. <laughs> and everything. And, um, what is it? So, like, when... Ellie is on the carousel. I, mean, I used to ride a carousel when I used to go to the fair back in the day. Those things used to be so much fun. And it's one of those safe rides on the fair you can get on without throwing up. <laughs> Ellie starts to give her the gaze and everything. Starts to look into Raleigh's eyes with loving eyes and stuff. And so when they're at the Halloween thing, they're dancing with the mask on. But Ellie just stops dancing and takes her mask off. Raleigh has no idea what's going on and then Ellie just goes for it and kisses her and then of course she does the whole sorry sorry thing and everything and so like Raleigh's all like you know you ain't got nothing to be sorry about because she likes her too and as cute and as romantic as that is it does remind me of what went on during the whole me too era with the whole you gotta have consent and everything and so that started making me think a long time ago 
where does all this crap come from? Like people always kissing people without their permission. And I stopped and I thought about it. Oh wait, it's actually drilled in our heads as we're like little kids. When we will watch these like Disney movies and everything and these romance movies, you always see that. They always script it to where two people kiss without consent and they set up a romantic setting. So it's drilled in people's heads as they're younger. And then some people try to emulate that some, not all, some, not no Harvey Weinstein type person, but like the innocent people, they see that in like children movies and romance movies. They're like, okay, I'm going to be romantic and give you a kiss. But then of course the other person like, whoa, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And so that has to stop at some point in time. This needs to stop being drilled in young people's mind that is so romantic to kiss a person without consent. And, you know, because then you're going to have a Harvey Weinstein type person and they're going to use the excuse. Oh, well, you know, it was in this kid's movie back in the day I saw and it was romantic. So I'm trying to be romantic on this person when, you know, they're not, you know what I'm saying? Because they have other intentions. And so I really wish, like, it is, like, it's, it's awkward to ask a person to kiss them before you're going to kiss them, but it is the appropriate thing to do. So I wish in TV shows and movies, they'll be all like, can it something I do? Like, can I, like, you know, kiss you or something like that? Like, and had the person ask, well, why? And they're all like, because, like, I really like you or this and that, or I want it to be romantic. And if they can write it in a way where it doesn't seem cheesy or creepy or nothing like that, I think more people will drill it in their mind, okay, then yeah, you should ask before you do it. Because what I don't understand is like, so many girls get pissed at guys who do it like in like a tv show or movie today they are like oh that guy didn't ask for consent or they'll make it like a big like um deal on like you know commentary section and stuff and like people comment online and stuff but then when a girl does it or a person of the lgbt community does it i've noticed in tv shows everybody's totally okay with it and I don't understand that. It's like, how can you be okay with one? You can't be okay with the other. And I've seen that. I've seen that in the show Fleabag, where people, you know, the Fleabag character tried to kiss this one lesbian lady without her consent. And, you know, the lady wasn't cool with it at all. But then the Fleabag character did it again. And so, like, uh, nobody had a problem with that because it was two females and it was part of the LGBT community. But then when it's a male doing it, I've noticed that people are, like, you know, like, setting, like, you know, pitchforks on fire and all this other stuff because they're pissed. And I don't understand why it's okay for one, but then it's not okay for the other when you're watching it on TV. And, of course, you know, in real life, it's not okay, period, because you're supposed to ask and everything. And so I really hate that whole like um, unfairness and everything because it's kind of like they rag on the dudes for doing it, but they never rag on anybody else who does it. And that's just like so biased and everything. I've been talking about that for three minutes. So anyway, they're kissing and everything's cool and everything like that. And so at some point in time, the zombie has finally showed up and he starts to like, you know, attack Riley and attack Ellie and everything. Um, because, you know, they heard like a noise and here he comes. And of course, these zombies are very fast. Riley is shooting at him, but then she stops shooting when she gets scared. And so, like, she's not much of a freedom fighter. She ain't gonna keep uploading, like, lead in that dude. And then, so, Ellie just has a knife, and she's trying to fight. And this happens very quickly. And they're pushing it, and they're shoving, and all this other stuff. And so, Ellie is finally able to kill the zombie dude in the head with her knife. And she's so, like, happy. Like, hi, look what I did, and everything. And so, this is that first person she has killed, and everything, that she mentioned a long time ago. But then we see Raleigh, and Raleigh is just frozen in time and staring at Ellie. And Ellie's like, well, what's wrong? And then she points at Ellie's arm, and Ellie is like, crap, dude, I got bit. Because she's all like, you know, because think about it. If Raleigh never came back 
none of this would have happened. And of course, Ellie would never found out that she's immune, but she has no idea yet. And so like, then Raleigh shows her her hand and blood is dripping down from it. She got bit. Boy, I tell you, these zombies, they act so fast, you never see them bite people and stuff. And because I didn't even see Sam get bit or Carl from The Walking Dead. Like it happened so fast. So Ellie is pissed off, furious, and breaking everything in the mall. And we get to see that anger and that rage come out. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what I love. We had some zombie action. We had an emotional story. We had like two friends bonding and everything. We had a little romance. And now we have the aftermath of like emotional e rage and everything. And this is why I wish there were more zombies and zombie action in there because it helps build to that story and stuff. And so Raleigh has decided, okay, we got like two options, man. We can either take ourselves out now before the virus takes us out, or we can wait and however much time we got in just turn. So they picked the second one because <laughs> Raleigh don't want to do the first one <laughs> and everything. And so then it cuts from that to back to Ellie and Joel. Now I'm pissed because I wanted to see Raleigh turn because remember Ellie is immune and everything so she would have just been there feeling the effects of getting sick but not actually turning and then she would have saw Raleigh turn and that would have been an even bigger emotional like tugging at your heartstrings and everything and so like but we once again we never got to see that so I hate when they take stuff like that away from us and so it does make you wonder, well, after that happened, how did Ellie get evolved with the fireflies? Like, how did Marla, like, you know, kidnap her and stuff? Um, who discovered that Ellie was immune? Because, like, Ellie could have been like, oh, maybe it's just taking time or something like that, you know? And so, like, Ellie runs back to Joel after she finds, like, a sewing kit and she stitches him up. Now, I've seen this play out in many shows before, different kind of ways, depending on what kind of period piece it is. If it's like an old period piece, you have somebody cauterize the wound with like heat in their thing. And then in modern day, they teach you it's better if you just like, you know, sew yourself up. But like, ah, they're not really doing it properly because Joel was stabbed with a giant rusty nail. Yeah, Ellie stopped the wound from bleeding out and then she just sewed him up to stop it from like, you know, reopening up and germs getting inside and, and like, you know, him bleeding out. But he's gonna need antibiotics because there was a rusty foreign object inside his body. And you just can't patch yourself up after that because there are, you know, things inside you from the rust that's going to make you sick. So, and then not only that, but she didn't even sterilize the needle at all. No rubbing alcohol, no heating it up. And so she's putting a dirty infected thing inside his wound that's going to make him even more sick. And, you know... And also, you gotta remember, there could be organs that could have been hit. So you just can't sew yourself up or cauterize yourself. This is why you need a professional and everything to make sure there are no organs messed up. That thing went deep down inside of him and stuff. And I get this is a TV show, a post-apocalyptic show and everything. You can't do everything by the book. But you know, people are trying to learn from this. <laughs> and so, like, you gotta teach them to properly sterilize something. And so that's why you see like in a lot of shows, like even a lot of modern day shows, somebody got stabbed one time and then they had to like sew them up. And so somebody got like some alcohol and rubbed it on like the metal thing that they were going to use to like either cauterize or like, you know, sew that person up and everything. Because that needle and thread has been in there for a very long time, over 20 years and stuff. It's a pretty dirty looking house and everything. So yeah, not to mention, like I said before, he is gonna need antibiotics and probably a blood transfusion and stuff. So 
Yeah. <laughs> but all in all, this was a really good episode. And in the next episode, we see that they're about to meet some people and Ellie's going to have her guard up 24-7. Alrighty. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.